Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video as we conclude Praetor Week with Shieldred the Apocalypse. A very powerful card and can also set up some fun two-card combos, namely with Peer into the Abyss to just kill the opponent on the spot. We'll go over it in more detail later. And then Lich's Mastery, another great card alongside Shieldred that allows you to draw your entire library, which will then make it pretty trivial to win the game afterwards. But first, I've split up the deck into a few different categories, starting with Mana Acceleration. We've got Dark Ritual, which can also come in handy after we draw our entire deck to maybe give us a small mana boost to make it easier to win the game on the spot. We've got plenty of 2 mana ramp artifacts. Then at 3 mana, I've got a Mana Geode to scry one, since we are kind of a combo deck after all, so the scry is quite helpful. Relic of Legends can potentially make 2 mana with a Shieldred in play. Got Skyclave Relic, which can also be kicked to make additional copies of itself. Celestus, another one of the best 3 mana ramp artifacts that also gives us some additional card selection. And then we've got the 4 mana artifacts Vessel Archive and Key to the Archive. And then Solemn can also find a land and draws a card when it dies. And Gilded Lotus can tap for 3 right away. Then the next section is Spot Removal, where we have Blood Chief's Thirst, Cut Down, and Fatal Push at 1 mana. Then at 2 mana there's Feed the Swarm, which also answers enchantments, Heartless Act, Infernal Grasp, Power Word Kill, and even Walk the Plank. If you want more spot removal you could also play with Price of Fame, which gets a nice discount when targeting legendary creatures, so great at dealing with opposing commanders, also lets you surveil. Then we've got Elspeth's Nightmare, can also be used as a discard effect on the second chapter, and Graveyard Hate on the final chapter. We've got Soul Shatter, can get around hexproof creatures potentially. Soul Transfer, can exile opposing creatures. And if we also control an artifact and enchantment, maybe get back a creature from the graveyard. Baleful Mastery can also be cast for 2 mana if we just want to exile a creature right away and then the opponent gets to draw a card in return. Can sometimes even be an advantage if we control Shieldred as the opponent will take 2 more damage. And then Hagar Mauling can be played as a land. And finally a March of a Wretched Sorrow can also gain some life back. Then we've got plenty of card draw effects, starting with Sign and Blood, draw two cards at the cost of two life, can even target the opponent with it, and then they will take six damage total if we control Shieldred. There's Maze Mind, Tome, and Bank Buster to draw cards repeatedly at the cost of two mana. And then the Black Market Connections is awesome if we control Shieldred, as we can easily offset the life loss, and then we can spend some life making treasure tokens, drawing cards, and making a shapeshifter if we want to each turn, similar to Phyrexian Arena, which just draws one extra card each turn at the cost of one life. The Opportunist can also be a nice card draw engine if we can take out creatures repeatedly. Then Dread Presence rewards us for playing Swamps, which is most of our mana base. Can either deal 2 damage gain to a life to any target, or we can draw a card at the cost of 1 life. And then Invoke Despair, another staple in any mono black deck, can also deal with opposing enchantments and planeswalkers. Bolas the Citadel at 6 mana lets us play off the top at the cost of some life. And then the Immortal Sun gives all our spells a discount, shuts down all planeswalkers as we don't even have any ourselves, so it's going to be one-sided and also draws an extra card each turn in addition to pumping our team. Then we've got a few sweepers to complement our spot removal with Extinction Event, Languish, which luckily for us doesn't deal with our own Shieldred, same with a Ritual of Soot, and then Blood on the Snow can also maybe get Shieldred back from our graveyard as we are playing Snow-Covered Swamps. And the Meat Hook Massacre is still kind of the nerfed version, so it doesn't gain any life, but still very powerful. And then we've got several Tutor effects, as they're known, that let us search up any card in our deck, and that can help set up those two-card combos that win the game on the spot. We've got a Wishclaw Talisman, which we can activate for one mana, although the opponent will gain control of it, so we typically only activate it if we're ready to win right away. There's Demonic Bargain, which will exile the top 13 cards of our library, so there is a bit of risk that we exile the card we want to search for, but we have more than one win condition, so usually it doesn't matter. And then there's a Grim Tutor, which will cost us 3 life. And finally, the Burning Rune Demon, a 6-6 flyer that gives the opponent the choice of what card we get and which one we put into our graveyard. And then we have a few hand disruption spells, could easily play more of them if we face a lot of control decks and blue decks with counter spells and potentially replace some of the many spot removal spells with more discard. But the best ones are Duress, Inquisition of Kozilek and Thoughtseize. 
And then we also have a few ways to protect Shieldred once it's in play, so we don't have to spend the mana replaying Shieldred, which can get pretty pricey. So we have Feign Death, which can return Shieldred with a plus one counter if it dies. There's Kaya's Ghost Form, which also protects from exile effects, and Malaki Rebirth, which also has the flexibility of being played as a land. And then finally we get to some of our combo pieces and miscellaneous cards. There's Underworld Dreams, which says whenever an opponent draws a card, it deals one damage to that player. So that can also set up a two-card combo with the Peer into the Abyss, which we'll get to in a second, in case the opponent has plenty of answers to shield it, and enchantment's typically harder for the opponent to interact with. We've got Phyrexian Obliterator, which shines against red and green decks that don't have an easy way of getting rid of it. And then whenever a source deals damage to the Obliterator, that source controller sacrifices that many permanents. So if they deal five damage to the Obliterator to kill it, they have to sacrifice five permanents, which often includes their lands. And then there's Witch of the Moors, which is great alongside Shieldred, because it's a 4-4 Death Touch, saying at the beginning of your end step, if you gained a life this turn, each opponent sacrifices a creature, and you return up to one target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Now we don't have a ton of creatures in the deck that we can easily return with the Witch of the Moors, but just the fact that by having a Shieldred in play, gaining two life each turn, we can easily enable the Witch to make the opponent sacrifice is already worth it. And then finally, Lich's Mastery. This is one of the centerpieces of the deck. A six mana legendary enchantment. It has hexproof and says you cannot lose the game, but we have to be careful because when Lich's Mastery leaves the battlefield for any reason, we lose the game. So if the opponent has something like a River's Rebuke to balance all our non-land permanents, we would just lose the game on the spot. So we better get rewarded handsomely here for all the risk we're incurring, but we certainly do because whenever we gain life, draw that many cards. So if we have a Shieldred in play, we gain two life with our draw step, Two life means two cards, two cards means four more life from Shieldred, and you can see where this is going. So we essentially draw our entire deck, but we don't need to be afraid of decking because Mastery says we cannot lose the game. So once our library is empty, we simply stop drawing cards eventually, we stop gaining life with Shieldred, and we get to take our turn. And then the best step to take next is usually to play Reliquary Tower, saying we have no maximum hand size, so we can keep our entire deck in hand, so we don't have to discard down to seven end of turn, which is pretty important. Now there is another drawback to controlling Lich's Mastery, because whenever we lose life, for each one life we've lost, exile a permanent we control, or a card from our hand or graveyard. So we typically don't want to play Lich's Mastery if the opponent is very far ahead on board, because if they can deal a lot of damage to us, first we'll probably start by exiling cards in our graveyard. Once our graveyard is empty, we'll start exiling cards from our hand. Once our hand is empty, we have to start exiling our permanents, starting from our lands, and eventually if we're out of permanence, we have to exile our own Lich's Mastery, and that's how we lose the game. So typically only want to play it when the board is stable, so we can make sure we don't die to it. And then once we have our entire library in our hands, we can win the game with maybe an Eldritch Pact, a 7 mana sorcery, saying target player draws X cards and loses X life, where X is the number of cards in their graveyard. So even if the opponent only has 5 or 6 cards in their graveyard, we can target them with Eldritch Pact while we control Shieldred. This will deal 5 or 6 damage to them, and then multiply that by 2 and add that to the original damage if we control Shieldred, because we'll punish the opponent for drawing extra cards, so that can often win the game on the spot, but the more consistent win condition is peer into the abyss, 7 mana, and then target player draws cards equal to half the number of cards in their library, which in historic brawl will often exceed 40 cards, and then loses half their life total rounded up each time. So if we control Shieldred, this can easily deal 100 damage and to win us the game on the spot. So peer into the abyss and Lich's Mastery are two of the key cards we'll be searching up with our various tutors. And then our mana base, as I've mentioned, has lots of basic snow-covered swamps, snow lands because of blood on the snow, and then basic swamps not only for Dread Presence, which rewards us for playing swamps, but we also have Cabal Stronghold, which can generate extra mana if we have lots of swamps in play. So starting from five swamps, this will actually net us more mana, which can be very helpful when trying to cast some expensive spells or replaying Shieldred. And then we also have Castle Lockthwain as another card draw engine, Hive as a creature land, and then Faceless Haven, another payoff for having those snow-covered lands. And finally, the Reliquary Tower, which is nice alongside the Lich's Mastery. Let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Yawgmoth, a sacrifice deck. And having a bit of removal is fine. Three spot removal spells might be a bit much. I would much rather find ramp cards to go over the top. And yeah, this will work. 
Dark Ritual to maybe ramp out a Lich's Mastery, although unlikely that Shieldred's gonna stick around for long. Turn on Gutter Bones. Could also Ritual out Shieldred next turn, but if they have some spot removal, that's gonna be rough. So we'll take two. Problem with ramping out Mastery too is that we'll be under pressure. Now Dread Presence would be fine to ritual out next turn when we can play a land immediately following. So we can generate a bit of value. So maybe now I could sign in Blood. Although then I'll have to discard to hand size which is also not ideal. So we'll maybe save it for uh, a ritual into a Dread Presence. Either killing gutter bones or drawing a card. Reassembling skeletons, so opponent's got plenty of sacrifice fodder to go with the Ogmoth next turn. And the Skyclave Relic. Don't quite get to kick it here if I go for Ritual, which would be another option. So, yeah, a Ritual into Dread Presence. Play a land, kill gutter bones seems fine. That way we don't fall too far behind on boards, and uh, Yawgmoth is going to be less effective once in play. Opponent does have a Reclamation to get creatures back as well. Although a little slow. And then if they kill Dread Presence, we can maybe resolve Shieldred and keep it around. It's going to be Rankle, yeah, that's a very good one. And that's a repeatable kind of sacrifice engine to kill my creatures, so now I'm less interested in playing Shieldreds. Could go Relic plus Assign and Blood, since I'm probably not kicking a Relic this game. Opponent also forcing a discard. Yeah, we need to find an answer to Rankle, that's for sure. A few Mancer also would have been great alongside Rankle. Solemn I don't mind as much if it dies. So that was a good draw. Still need to find an answer to Rankle eventually, since our opponent can just use Reclamation to get their creatures back. Okay, a Resurrector. But they're probably not going to force a sacrifice here. Can still make me discard. And yeah, there's not a ton of cards in Graveyard for Lich's Mastery, so it feels a bit dangerous to play it. Feed the Swarm was a good draw. So, can play Relic and feed the Swarm. Or I can wait to, to kick it, and for now just sign in Blood plus feed the Swarm. Infernal Grasp also works. So maybe now I do want to play Relic and then still have Instant Speed Infernal Grasp available. And maybe wait for the opponent to make a move. They might try and get back a skeleton to sacrifice to Rankle. And then we kill it. Alright, never to kill it instead. Could also go after the Resurrector so they don't steal my Solemn. Sure. And then next turn kill Rankle. We are getting pretty low here so I have to be careful. Vessel's not bad either. Want to get to a spot where we can uh, untap with Shieldred while controlling Mastery to win the game. Opponent forcing a discard. Well, in that case, probably get rid of Vessel. Opponent also has to discard their last card at least. Grim Tutor, okay. So Feed the Swarm puts me to 6. Grim Tutor would put me to 3. But I guess we can play a Shieldred here. Since I'm not even sure what I would shoot her for at this point. And then Shieldred can gain us some life back as her opponent's empty handed now. If they get back Rankle, they don't have the mana to play it. Just a land. Okay. So I get to untap with Shieldred and 7 mana. Grim Tutor leaves 4. Don't think there's anything that wins me the game on the spot. And if I go for Lich's Mastery, then uh, 
opponent can get rid of Shieldred before we get to untap with it. So I really just need to find another instant speed answer to Rankle. And uh, maybe ideally something that exiles. Not sure if we have those. I would have five mana left here. Could also go with a Witch of the Moors. And then I can get back my Solemn end of turn. That seems pretty strong. And then I can sacrifice the Witch to Rankle. Punt will have to sacrifice their Skeleton. Or I can go for Baleful Mastery, which will get rid of Rankle for good. Witch of the Moors is a more fun option, but Mastery is probably just the best answer here. And then I'll keep Shieldred back for damage. It's not going to make a difference. Opponent does not know what we searched up, so they're not necessarily going to play around Baleful Mastery. Alright, there's Rankle. So I should be able to deal with it now. So that's exiled for good. Get to untap. Heartless Act, nice too. Play Mastery, and if we can dodge another removal spell for a turn, we're in the clear. And I have a Heartless Act available. Maybe worth it to kill Skeleton in case of like a sacrifice a creature, destroy a creature type effect, but they could always bring it back, and most of those removal spells are one mana. So yeah, if we get to untap, we get to draw our entire deck, and then there's a ton of different win conditions we can choose from. If they kill Shieldred, the game continues. Alright, actually had to walk the plank, that's unfortunate. So do I kill Skeleton? Well, if I don't, I have to exile a card from my graveyard, and then... I guess at least Gutter Bones is not enabled, since we're not going to lose any more life. So we can wait to kill the Ogmoth instead. And then I guess I'll do it now. Replay Shieldred, and then we get another crack at it next turn. With our opponent still top decking. There's no Rankle to get back. Nothing in the graveyard that really matters. And just a Lance, I think we're in the clear now. Opponent can play Yawgmoth and get a redraw, maybe if they find a 1 mana removal spell that can still save them. Opponent putting Varagoth in play, that's fine. But yeah, this uh, Lich's Mastery says whenever you gain life, draw that many. We're gonna gain two here in our draw step, which means we draw cards, which means Shieldra triggers again, and uh, we draw our entire deck. Gonna take a second, but then eventually we will uh, go ahead and cast a lethal seven mana sorcery. And I'm actually gonna go to the settings here and then auto order triggered abilities, which will save us a few clicks. And there's a Peer into the Abyss, and that's probably going to be my finisher of choice here. Opponent's going to draw cards equal to half the number of cards in their library, which right now would be 42. And then, uh, yeah, they're going to take 84 damage of Shieldred. Also important when going off with Lich's Mastery is that you keep track of Reliquary Tower. So you play that as your land for the turn, so you don't have to discard all those cards to hand size. One of the very important utility lands in the deck. Although in this case we're just going to cast Peer into the Abyss and that's going to be game. So just need to keep track of that one. Also important to keep in mind is the clock, which can sometimes uh, be dangerous in a situation like this where it's still going while you have no control over your actions. So you have to be pretty quick about actually taking your turn once you get to untap with 
a very full grip, so it's not always easy to find the cards you're looking for. Still 31 cards remaining to draw. Don't think we've spotted Reliquary Tower yet. But yeah, as I've said, just need to keep track of Peer into the Abyss. And there's a Reliquary Tower. Sometimes you might be short a mana or two, in which case you can play Cabal Stronghold to make more mana to cast your spell, or a Dark Ritual, although in this case we've already used Dark Ritual. So there's still a few ways to give you a small mana boost where needed. So yeah, we're roping here, but not much we can do about it. Just gotta peer into the abyss as soon as possible. So I'll keep it ready. And of course we can't lose the game because of decking, because a Lich's Mastery prevents that from happening. So no concerns there. So no more cards left, still a bunch of triggers to gain life. So those will go off. <laughs> and then hopefully we have enough time to cast Peer. Five, four, three, two, one. Peer the opponents. And there we have it, the satisfying machine gun triggers. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing elves. And we have a two lander with Hagra Mauling. Infernal Grasp on two, hopefully pick up a third land. Nightmare should be good. So I think I'm willing to give this a try. Then we have the Underworld Dreams. So even if they answer Shieldred, we can still win the game with a Peer into the Abyss, which is lethal alongside Underworld Dreams. And I'm fine killing the Loam Speaker now. And then now we'll go with uh, Relic, I think. Give us some more mana. Get closer to a Mortal Sun, which will also shut down Freilis. Wait for them to play Creature to Nightmare. Sculptor. Still a 2 2 at the moment, so that works. And I can play a Talisman. And then Talisman likely will find our Peer into the Abyss at some point. Could also go for Lich's Mastery. Depends how the next couple turns play out. Alright, Circle of Dreams is scary. Can look at their hands, all creatures. So at least we know what we're facing. But it does mean at least Shieldred is safe. Now I could also go for Immortal Sun, which will shut down Freilis. So I think that's still the safest play overall. Opponent can still make a ton of mana here, probably starting with War Master into, I want to say, Galag Reaters. And then maybe play Marwyn or a uh, Beast Whisper as soon as possible. But I can use a Talisman to find a Sweeper. And then we should be fine. Lich's Mastery, also very good, and an Invoke Despair. Okay, so what's the move here? If I play Underworld Dreams, then next turn I can go for a lethal Peer into the Abyss. Am I in any danger of dying? It's not impossible. Although if we play a Shieldred, it's a lot less likely. Opponent will have a Circle of Dreams to make a ton of mana, but at least no free release to untap it. Talisman we can only use in our turn, so we'd have to do it now. Could also go Shieldred plus Invoke Despair. Sure. Because Shieldred is kind of the same as an Underworld Dreams in that regard. 
deals with Freilis as well. And we're at 25. But yeah, activating Talisman to find a board wipe would have been the absolute safest play. Although then we do give our opponent control of Talisman, so it's going to take us a little bit longer to actually kill them. Beast Whisper also punished by Shieldred. So still quite a bit of mana available. Arch Druid as well, okay. If we weren't in trouble before, we certainly are now. With Arch Druids adding even more mana. Although Ritual of Soot here looks pretty decent. I guess it doesn't kill Beast Whisper. A languish wouldn't kill Marwyn. So your opponent's going off, having fun. That's what we like to see. And then we'll have to figure out if we can win the game next turn. Opponent attacks for 14, we're at 11. Talisman for Peer into the Abyss, which will cost 6 mana thanks to Mortal Sun. And our opponent's gonna save us the trouble here. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Joda, 5 color Legends. So, a tough matchup. Our hand's okay, missing some ramp, perhaps, but I think I'll try it. Thoughtseize and Mastery as early interaction. There's the Relic, perfect. I think I'm okay to Thoughtseize now. Maybe take a 2-mana ramp artifact. And yeah, Arcane Signet, I think, is going to be the pick. They can still explore into Survey, so maybe there's something to be said about taking Survey instead. But it would still need to draw the lands with the Explore for that to work. I think Signet just fixes their mana too much. So, they're missing red mana still. No turn 2 play unless our opponent plays a creature we can exile. Opponent does have the red mana and can survey here. So taking the uh, Signet didn't quite pan out. But at least Joda we can exile. Can play Shieldred next turn and still cast Mastery for 2 mana. Opponent's gonna play Partners first. And we'll wait and see here what happens. Into the north. And then they can still play Joda. It's gonna be a cleansing Nova, destroying all creatures instead. Okay. Fair is fair. We'll just play a demon here. And then what do I wanna search up? That's a tough question. Maybe Peer into the Abyss and Citadel, or Peer into the Abyss and Lich's Mastery, which would both win the game with Shieldred out. They can give me Lich's Mastery, and then I'll have to find a different win condition once we have Mastery out, but that's not too difficult. Maybe an Eldritch Pact will do. It's a Talpa, that's a large one. Although it can be exiled by Mastery. So, could also just make them sacrifice with Invoke Despair. We have options. I guess Invoke Despair is the cleaner solution here. And then keep a 2 mana Mastery available. Could also sign in Blood, but I'll play it safe. It's gonna be a good tempo play of just casting a 2 mana Mastery here on Joda. And then next turn I can replay Shieldred. 
And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing niv Mizzet, Parun. Always a scary deck to face, but we've got a decent hand. With Arcane Signet, Underworld Dreams can also punish the opponent for drawing a ton of cards. And Invoke Despair and Massacre potential answers. Nightmare we can also run out for the discard mode on Chapter 2. So let's do that right now. Not gonna run Shielded into 3 open mana. It's gonna make it tricky to uh, replay if they counter it here. Well, let's see what they're working with. They have a Pact of Negation, Invoke the Winds to steal an artifact or creature. Burn down the house, an answer as well. I think Epiphany is probably the scariest. Gold Span is also a problem, so yeah, there's a lot of problem cards that we have to deal with. Pact of Negation could allow them to play Niv Mizzet and keep up a Pact. So maybe Sublime Epiphany is still the pick, just as the most versatile card. So I can play Dreams and Guardian Idol. And then Shark only counters artifacts or creatures, does not counter Invoke Despair. So that can maybe pull us ahead. And luckily for us, they're unable to play Goldspan. Now they could Pact my Invoke Despair, but then next turn they'll have to pay for it. Or I can try and go for Shieldred, while they cannot counter with Great Shark, but then Invoke the Winds can steal Shieldred. And Feign Death, not really the ideal answer. Can I Feign Death an opposing creature? I guess I can. I could then kill my own Shieldred and Feign Death to gain control of it. So, sure, we'll try that. That resolves. And if they go for Burn Down the House to kill it, Feign Death will also work. Right, it's going to be a gold span first. That one we cannot kill with Power Word, but we can kill with Invoke Despair. Although they're likely to then pact the Invoke. Could also go for Massacre for four. Which is maybe the better solution. Ooh, Witch of the Moors. That's another kind of must counter for them. So I'll attack for four. And then... I think Massacre for 4, although that does tap us out of Feign Death mana. So I guess I'll play Witch, make them Pact. Next turn, pay for Pact. And then I can Invoke Despair. Sure. Alright, they let it resolve, that's surprising. So that deals with Goldspan. I guess they just want to set up Burn Down the House, but... Uh, Fain Death will counteract that nicely. So now the question is, do I save the Witch? I don't have any life gain to really go with a Witch once Shieldred dies, although we can let Shieldred go to the graveyard to maybe eventually get back. But we would need life gain to enable it in the first place. And Massacre no longer gains life, so that's going to be tricky. So probably save Shieldred. That point's gonna Pact, just to make sure they clear the board. But it does lock them into paying for Pact next turn. So we can resolve something powerful in the meantime. Search for Ascanta we can kill with Invoke Despair. So that seems fine. Um, or I can resolve a Shieldred first, since they won't be able to really deal with it in the meantime. Ascanta's not in any danger of transforming. Okay, we'll replay Shieldred. Opponent pays for Pact. 
and then we'll untap and invoke despair which will also gain us more life. My hand's not looking great, some clunky removal spells that don't line up with what the opponent is doing, so we'd love to find a card draw engine that's difficult to interact with. But for now we can invoke, and I guess I'll play a land first in case they picked up a spell pierce. And yeah, opponent's falling very low here, down to four. They can steal shield it with Invoke the Winds, and then we'll just Power Word kill, untap, and then Hive, and maybe even Guardian Idol can close out the game. And our opponent explodes, yeah, they know what's incoming. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Lilian of the Veil, so that's going to be a problematic card. Luckily our hand is pretty low curve, so we can empty it pretty quickly. Now I don't have an answer to Liliana, but uh, we'll give it a try. Cut down to maybe kill an early creature. Inquisition is going to have a look. Could take Underworld Dreams, could take Celestus. Or a cut down if they have a two drop they want to resolve. Stronghold could also give us a small mana boost in the future. Brain Maggot's going to have a look. Probably goes for Underworld Dreams since we have two ramp artifacts we can play. Power Word Kill can eventually free the Dreams. So I'll play a Celestis. And we might see Liliana start ticking up. Jadar instead, maybe missing a third land. Alright, Thraxian Arena is one of the best ways to counteract Liliana. Could go Relic into Arena, and then I'll have to discard Power Word Kill. That's okay. We'll probably find more answers soon. And they might be more interested in applying pressure here instead of developing their planeswalker. But no, nope. see Liliana. It's gonna plus. <sighs> and then, yeah, ideally find a board wipe or a way to destroy a planeswalker. But at least we have the mana to cast most spells we would draw. Meat Hook Massacre, perfect. So I can sign in blood and then still meet Hook Massacre for one afterwards at the very least. Maybe hit a land drop. Alright, so I'll have to discard Feed the Swarm. I think that's still worth it. And then I can Massacre for two. Kill the zombie. And then I can also decide to discard Underworld Dreams. Instead of Feed the Swarm. Nighthawk Scavenger. I guess that one's pretty good to kill. So I'll get rid of the Dreams. Now Liliana is getting close to ultimate here. So luckily drew the perfect answer, Soul Transfer. No creature to get back with it. But that's okay. So I guess I can Duress first. See what they're working with. Just all creatures. Some pretty scary ones too. Now if I play Shieldred, I guess her opponent's likely to want to play Kalitas and then minus Liliana if they draw land. Otherwise they're going to hit me, play a 3 mana spawn of Mayhem. Just trying to set up a situation where we can maybe soul transfer get back Shieldred from the graveyard for value. But that might be a little greedy here. So this doesn't let us any extra mana yet. Yeah, I think I'll just kill Scavenger, Soul Transfer Liliana, keep it simple. And then hopefully take over with our Frex in Arena card advantage. We're very far ahead on mana. So that shouldn't be too difficult. Okay. Now the Nyxathid is pretty large. So that's scary. 
can play shield it and then just take a hit from it next turn opponent will be able to play a spawn of mayhem which i cannot take with inquisition probably no point in playing the inquisition and then i could activate celestus maybe after playing shield to gain more life All right, Inquisition can go. All right, so we're going to take a bit of a beating here. Could also trade and then replay Shieldred next turn, which is maybe the safest play so they won't be able to Spectacle spawn. And we have the mana to replay Shieldred thanks to Cabal Stronghold making more mana. And our opponent concedes. Yeah, stuck on three, unable to deploy their four drops. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Ronas, the Indomitable, so a green aggro deck. So yeah, this hand seems okay. We've got a bit of disruption, removal with walk to plank, ramp with vessel, so just need a fourth land. Do I take the turn one elves, or maybe better the liberator, which can destroy my artifacts? And then I could walk the plank elves on turn one, which is probably fine. Turn three relic is excellent. So we're off to the races here. Horn Beetle can pick up a counter next turn from Ronas. If we draw land, we can invoke despair. Don't want to play Shieldred into a known tail swipe. So invoke despair is probably the safest here. Slow down the opponents and pick up a few more cards. They probably sack Beetle, and then I have to hope they don't play a land into Oddity and smash me for 9. Ooh, Phyrexian Obliterator. That might be one of the best cards in the matchup. They can kill it with Tail Swipe, but that's going to cost them a lot of permanence. So, yeah, let's play Obliterator and see how they manage. And then I can still kill the Tracker with Feed the Swarm. And in a fight with Tail Swipe, it's not like they can only deal one damage to the Obliterator with Death Touch like you can if you maybe control a Death Touch Trampler. And yeah, Phyrexian Obliterator prompting a concession here. That's why it's in the deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing another 5-color Joda deck. And yeah, this hand seems fine. I probably hang on to Rebirth, even though the few removal spells the Joda deck has might be able to exile Shieldred, in which case Rebirth doesn't help. So could already play Shieldred next turn, or we could just play Tapped Rebirth and Sign in Blood. Start here. Sure. Plenty of expensive and powerful cards in hand that we wouldn't mind ramping into, so we'll go Lotus plus a Relic. And then next turn we can already get these in play, maybe starting with Immortal Sun. Could still be in trouble if our opponent has something like Urza's Runa's Blast, although at least Immortal Sun's legendary, so that will stay in play. Clone Crafter making duplicates. Okay, so... If I play Mortal Sun, I can actually still play something afterwards. Like a 3 mana Shieldred. Which is pretty good value. Opponent has a Vanishing Verse. Send it back to the command zone. But Immortal Sun makes it pretty trivial to replay. Especially with all the artifact ramp we have. But yeah, if we can keep Shieldred in play, it's probably going to win us the game alongside Peer into the Abyss. Can check out her hand for any counter spells, and maybe play a Citadel for now. Okay, Fateful Absence, more instant speed removal. Can take Key or Absence. I think I actually take the Key here, and then I'll be able to beat Absence by just outvaluing the opponent here with all our card draw. Solemn will shuffle, which is good, since I didn't really want Hagra Mauling. 
play a land for free and can replay Shieldred once again if I'd like. Have them Fateful Absence it, I'll just replay it again next turn. Taking key makes it harder for the opponent to combo off next turn. And they do have some powerful cards in hand, admittedly. Partners to maybe give Joda haste. The goal also is a great card. Right, they're gonna play Solemn. In which the Clone Crafter provided. But her opponent doesn't have any basics to search up. Alright. Can um, Power Word kill Clone Crafter? Can pay one life just to get it out of the way. Sure, we'll keep going. And then, uh, sure, Doomblade. Discard a land. Play free land off the top. And now we can keep going. Now, do I have enough mana to actually play Shieldred and Peer into the Abyss afterwards? Let's find out. Yeah, we actually do. The Relic of Legends making two mana also helpful, but we don't even need to tap it. And that's game. Sweet. So yeah, early mana acceleration remains a big deal in these Brawl games. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and it's the Shieldred Mirror Match. A fitting way to end this series. And we've got a promising hand with a turn 3 connections. If our opponent doesn't have a discard spell, we have our own duress. So normally I would wait maybe until turn 2 to go Signet plus duress. Given that our opponent could have their own discard spells and connections is so important, I think we duress now. And see what we're working with. Thoughtseize is going to be worth taking, although they still have an agonizing remorse. So unfortunately they have two discard effects. And sure, we'll take the remorse since Thoughtseize is going to cost them more life. And our opponent can tap out for it anyway. I guess they can go Thoughtseize plus Knight now, but that plays into our Blood Chief's Thirst, which I'm happy to use here. So yeah, obviously takes connections. Now I'm actually incentivized to wait on Opportunists. So we'll just play a Signet and pass. And then next turn we get to draw a card of Knight dying. So yeah, we still found a card draw engine after all. Which is good. Although Gonti is going to be quite effective against us too. We have an answer for Shieldred lined up. This one won't draw since it exiles. So it's going to be a 3 mana Gonti. That could certainly find something impactful. The rest to take mastery, presumably. Okay, Bankbuster is a good one too. So it can go Mana Geode plus Bankbuster. And then what are we looking for? I guess any card draw engine. Languish is not great since it doesn't deal with an opposing Shieldred. And then next turn I can play Shieldred and still draw with a Bank Buster. And both Shieldreds will cancel each other out. So we'll play Shieldreds. And then I guess I'll attempt to draw now. If our opponent kills Shieldred in response, at least the Opportunist will trigger. Eh, Heartless Act. So we will take quite a bit of damage now of Shieldred. But we're ahead on cards. And Extinction Event on Evens looking great. It will take a bit more damage, but hopefully we'll be stable afterwards. Down to 6 we go. And 
And then we'll draw. And play Hive. Okay, so a big life total advantage for the opponent. They can replay Shieldred for just 5 mana. So we're still in trouble, but we can replay our own Shieldred too here. What can we get with Demonic Bargain? No doubt something powerful. Although I think playing Shieldred is still better. And then we'll pass. Should probably just draw with Bangbuster now. Okay. Get a pilot which can trump if needed. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, only at 3 life, but I guess we're ahead with a bargain next turn being able to find a combo piece, although we likely still need to clear Shieldred before comboing off. Otherwise, they will cancel each other out. Sweet. So, yeah, close game here in the mirror match. Extinction event being clutch. And, yeah, our commander is very powerful, but in return, the deck also gets matched against some of the best historic brawl decks out there. So, Golos and Teferi decks are common occurrences when playing Shieldred, which does kind of balance things out. So, if you're facing those powerful decks, especially if they're blue with access to a lot of counter spells, that can make things tough when trying to resolve expensive 6 and 7 mana cards. But otherwise, I like my chances. So, yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. This also concludes Praetor Week. So, thanks for being on this journey with me but now we'll go back to more regular decks as well but for now want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day i also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd